Be vigilant, thoroughbreds. We're eating good in the drama department in Belvoir, and I'm not referring to Belvoir's players' abysmal rendition of Waitress. No, we filled up on the feast that was served up in Octavia Oliver's runway last night. The fashion, the drug dealing, the drama of it all. I'm being, I'm getting wet. Whiplash. One second, Blair stealing the spotlight from Miss Claudia, fell flat on her ass, rose to become Octavia Oliver's newest star model, and that leather moment to die for. Not to mention Blair serving us all couture know-how, courtesy of her new set of 6-2 Blamazon besties. Squad goals, anyone? So, when, why, oh, why did she have to strut off the runway and right into hot water? Bellow Velvet Babe 21, what's your beef with our Queen Bee? Was Blair really dealing Addies? The juicier question is, who cares and why is Dean Stein on America runs on Duncan, the Ivies runs on Adderall? Of course, these allegations are totally ups and unsubstantiated like everything else out of Bellow's keyboard. It's almost like the blog could benefit from the fact checks an actual editor. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be watching the fallout closely. Or not going to be. Kisses! The tea. Or what's left of it. Hopefully you're all having a good day. Staying well. Chapter 6! Ding dong, the witch ain't dead. You bust into the dean's office with a demon like a demon possessed with more than a little self-righteous indignation. Protests already on your lips. Dean Steinelm, you can't actually believe all the absolute crap. Whether or not I believe it is out of no importance. I called you here as a courtesy, Miss Hughes. The decision has already been made to suspend you. I ask that you remain on campus until the university can investigate these claims. So you're suspending someone based off of unsubstantiated claims. Yeah, boy. Suspended, but... I'm innocent. You're gonna believe some garbage post on the T? They said I was cloned from a sow! She digs her fingertips into her temples. Oh yeah, like she's the one with the headache here. I admit that your case is somewhat exceptional. You're our person to watch, Miss Hughes. Yeah, so you shouldn't be like backing me up, defending the innocence of your poster child or whatever. You don't seem to understand. You're the face of Belvoir, and the face has already had one scandal with the professor. And I've been staying away from him as ordered. Which is totally true! For the last 12 hours or so. The point is I have to protect the university from another scandal. And if you're the scandal harbinger, that makes you the problem. The press is warming, the campus, they're calling an epidemic, the dark underbelly of performance drug use at elite New York universities, based off of unsubstantiated tea post. <clears throat> I already had to put out a blanket ban on all daytime parties, and I believe you're smart enough to know how effective that will be. No one throws daytime parties, ma'am. I think you're an idiot. But getting all the Greek life best? Yeah, that'll do it. I'm not trying to single you out, it's the word of some anonymous blogger, but I have to look like I'm doing something about this problem. Seriously? This is BS. You're doing something, is sitting behind your desk, taking your coward's way out. You're throwing me under the bus over a lie. Your frustration is noted. How about I go get an attorney? How about that frustration? But this isn't your first time that your petty drama has become my PR nightmare, so it's on you to figure this mess out. No, you're the dean of a university. Oh, mark my words, I'm gonna figure this out, fix it, and then I'll leave things spotless, since that's clearly beyond your reach. Make that your top priority. You spin on your heel and start to stomp out of her office, but she calls out after you, which you should just hold up your middle fingers and leave. And Miss Hughes, for God's sake, stay away from the press. If you don't appear to abide by your suspension, it won't bode well for anyone. Especially for you. You've taken two steps towards the courtyard when Zoe swoops in and pulls you into an alcove on the side of a building. Yo, you got that good stuff! You got the A! Oh my 
my god, there are reporters everywhere, and then I see a shaky snapshot of you running into the dean's office? What's going on? You give her the rundown and watch as her face cycles from shock to indignation to pure unadulterated rage. Let me in there. I'm gonna shove my stiletto right up Steinhelm's ass, then bellows for good measure. Yeah, well, Dean Steinhelm's small potatoes. She can't lose me without losing money. And not to mention the attention the school gets just by me being here. Steiny wants me off campus, but I need to focus on finding out who Bello is before they post any more insane. And that's when you hear it. The shouts of your name, the pounding of feet. It sounds like a herd of wildebeests that killed Mufasa. Or... Blair Hughes! Blair Hughes, where are you? We just want to talk! Our sources say she had a meeting with the Dean. She should still be around here. Or a herd of reporters out for Queen Bee Blood. Oh god, they're getting close. I can't let them see me. So we quick. Make out with me. Hide me. Ow! Yeah, my making out never works. Unless it's in the movies. Just do something. Uh, yeet! What? What? She takes you by the shoulders and shoves you into a hedge and then dives down beside you. It's prickly! Ah, oh, there's a spider. Stay still, they're about to run by. The reporters stampede past like a bull is hot on their trail. You hold your breath, watching through the brambles as their shoes go by. Oh god, that was close. Thanks for the save. She pulls you back to your feet and picks some leaves off of you. Anything for you, boo. We have to get somewhere safe. Then we can figure out how to stop Bello, once I figure out who they are. Your phone dings with another T-post, you glance at it, and yep, the devil cometh when calleth. Bello! You didn't think that was all I had to offer you today, did you, Belvoir? Oh no, I've got plenty more love to dish out. I'm talking Poppy Min Sinclair, but she's not a Sinclair after all. That's right, Poppy could be the next act of Mari, and Piers, you are not the father. And I can finally tell you Poppy's been MIA since last year's fall from grace. Blair replaced her on the throne, sure, but what about back home? Let's just say sisterhood's the nail in Poppy's coffin. Now the Piers and Anna's secret, legitimate child is set to grace the public. Poppy can scratch Min Sinclair Harris off her CV. Kisses! The real tea. You are not the real tea. Poppy's gonna flip out. Oh no, she's not. She's going to be completely calm. Oh, but where the hell did you come from? I was in the bushes too! Hell itself. And that's where I'm going to drag this bellow velvet bitch. And you two are gonna help me. She stomps all the way to her bedroom, which shockingly is clean and even smells like Chanel 5. Like, looks like someone was getting their life back together before Bello took a wrecking ball to it. But the person uh, who's been tearing Blair and now Poppy to shreds is definitely another X minion. There was a Velvet Sips on the Shady X group chat. Oh my god, you're right. Velvet Sips, Bello Velvet. Obviously the same person. Amateur. Every good internet troll knows you need to switch up your aliases. Just then you hear some hushed whispers in the hall and look to see Trixie, Chloe, and Ohio peering through Bobby's open door. Oh my god, Bobby's bedroom is open. Did she die? And now her ghost is haunting the Zeta Halls, and she's gonna start bullying us all again, like, dead? Actually, shockingly, tragically, Poppy's still alive. We're trying to figure out who's dropping rumors about us. Wanna help? Oh, can we? Ah, uh, this is gonna be so much fun. Like, when Denzel teamed up to defeat Lucifer and Michael, or Destiel. <laughs> can we just call him Castiel? I'm just confused. Also, we're Sam and Dean and all this. Really, Farmsville? Enlisting Tweedledee, Twiddledum, and Twiddlebottle, Ed Blonde? I'm using all the resources we can get. It's called strategizing, something you used to know how to do. 
You turn to the Zetas, who join you in the room eagerly looking like they've uh, never been asked to participate in anything important in their lives. Because that would require them to have brain cells. So... You guys have any thoughts? The group of trust fund airheads. They've never had a thought in their life. Oh no. Chloe doesn't, uh, either doesn't hear her, or so used to Poppy's insults, or she tunes it out like white noise machine. Okay, so I had this crazy dream last night about clouds and why they're so fluffy. Oh god, Poppy's right. About Bello. Any thoughts about Bello? Um, if she has the word 21 in her username, maybe she's 21 years old? This is true. Or it's just a cover. She wants people to think she's 21? That's like what old people do online. I saw a documentary. Where the hell did you see a documentary? Poppy, you got anyone on your block list that matches that description and hate you enough to take a pause in hating me? Hmm. Ariana. Hmm. There's a, um... Michaela Babel. I accidentally emailed her parents a pic of positive pregnancy test. Uh, Daniel Adams, both on the Joel Twins, Persephone Dalton, the one that snowballed deliciously. Oh, and then there's Allison Abbott, who I just snapped at once during orientation, and she never came back. <clears throat> um, you guys know that Bello Velvet is a specialty drink at the Dining Commons, right? And Velvet Sips, too, it makes sense. Taylor pokes her head around the corner, and, uh, God, the girl still has a better disappearing, reappearing act than Houdini himself. Taylor, where have you been? I just got back from a weekend trip to the Pocket Creatures Convention with Benedict. I had such a good time. She sighs dreamily, probably remembering all the nerd action she got. Yeah, okay. Besides, I've, uh, become a... Zeta's bow secretary. I keep track of our finances and plan fun events and stuff. Like, we have bonding nights and everything. Zeta actually feels like a sisterhood. Oh, don't, don't tell Poppy that. That's disgusting. Anyway, the Bellow Velvet's this weird school spirit gimmick. Um, a turmeric mocha with activated charcoal foam. Activated what now? When the f did a cup of coffee just become so goddamn complicated? You have activated charcoal now. Foam charcoal. What? I tried it on a dare once. I was in the bathroom all day, and it was yellow out both ends. Oh, God, no wonder. Can anyone in this house please learn to self-edit? That's it. Everybody but Barnyard Barbie and her annoying sidekick Skipper out. She corrals as it is in the halls and slams the door and turns to you with a grin. You see something cold, vicious, spark back to life in her eyes. Finally, I can feel it. This is the turning point. She strides into her walk-in closet. You hear some shuffling around, and a few minutes later, she struts back out. And before she's wearing old pink. God damn it, I was right. She's like the chick from fucking Harry Potter. The queen is back, and today marks the beginning of her rise back to power. Oh no, the fuck you don't. Welcome back, Poppy. So I guess this game is on for real then? Or, well, it would be, but as far as the T's voting system is concerned, you aren't even a competitor. Loot all you want, Farmsville! Makes it that much easier to steal the throne right from under your unsuspecting, calloused farmhands. Now, our directive is clear. We go to the dining commons, find the pawn scum that orders that vile drink, and unearth the little toad. Okay, but what about the part where I'm not allowed on campus or reporters will mob me for being a drug dealer? Um, I was thinking about that too. Taylor pokes her head back inside. Oh, sweet Jesus. See what you did, Blair? They're like vampires. You invite them in and they think they can slink in whenever they please. Ignoring her. Damn, Poppy really did lose all of her clout, huh? Taylor comes in with a pastel garment bag and walks right up to you. You need a way to get around campus unnoticed, or else you're gonna get some real bad press. I can help you with that. I bought this outfit for the Lolita convention I'm going to next weekend, but I think you need it more. There's a wig and everything. 
I swear to God, if it's a red wig with sunglasses and I'm already imagining what this can mean, I swear on Jesus. Hmm. It's more pastels than I could stomach, but Taylor's right. This will definitely keep you off the press's radar. She leans in close to Whisper. Which will lead the press to hound on Poppy alone. I guarantee her Belbor would love to see it. Ah, oh, diamond choice. Oh, Jesus, God help me. I feel like a whole different person. The power of cosplay, I guess. I think you look adorable. Try on the pastel wig and let me know if you, uh, want it. Okay, I was... I was close. This is even worse. Wow, I never thought I'd be so fun, or it'd be fun, so fun to completely be unrecognizable. You totally are rocking a Blair, and the press will never find you. Right, said no one ever. Prep time is over, peons. We're moving out. Time to show Bello what it means to go against me. And time to show another ex lackey what happens when they try to mess with me. The three of you hurry towards the dining commons, but as soon as you hit the heart of the campus, reporters are on you like a pack of lions. It's Poppy Min. I found Poppy Min. Excuse me, young lady. I would love, I, I love your whole look, but we need to talk to Poppy Min. As the press crowds around, one of them pushes you out of the way so he can better aim his camera at Poppy's face. First of all, it's Men Sinclair. So are the rumors of the real Sinclair hair true? Absolutely not. Get the camera out of my face. Uh, don't touch me. You and Zoe stand back watching the drama unfold. So we're ditching her, right? Hang on. I got an even better idea. Raise your voice to yell into the crowd. I heard that the hair is... Blair Hughes herself. The bastard girl said something! What was that uh, you said about Blair Hughes? Super secret sources say that Blair isn't a Hughes at all, but a Sinclair mysteriously separated at birth from a real family. <gasps> no, can this be? Oh my god. She was recently discovered in Farmsville by her maternal grandmother, the mother of Pears, Sinclair's real wife, and brought to New York. Reunited with a real family, and she enrolled in the Belvoir to fulfill her training to become the true Harris, though her identity has been kept secret. What the actual... You leveled up. Oh my god, is this becoming a thing? How is this leveling up? You would think that when it reaches the next line, it's a level. Oh, whatever. That makes sense. Blair Hughes is well known to be the most influential person on campus. As reporters start theorizing with each other, Poppy slips away from them, rejoining you and Zoe outside the dining commons. I'm not thanking you for that at all. Oh, please. Like, I even did it for you. As soon as you step inside of the Nine in Commons, Poppy shakes out her hair angrily and takes out a compact and touches up her foundation. I can't stand being in your presence any longer. I'm heading to the counter. One of the baristas should be able to name drop the degenerates who drink that awful coffee. And then I'll be through this. While you're bringing zero subtlety to our plan, Blair and I will talk to the coffee hipsters. They can probably identify a bellow velvet by scent. Said coffee hipsters look you up and down as you approach, eyeing your new look with intrigue. Oh, this is where you've gone. Mad props, the ensemble. It's totally nonconformist. Uh, thanks. We heard you guys know a thing or two about coffee. Petra and I did a uh, place in Regional Latte Art Slam four years running. What's it to you, though? Well, so here's the Daryl. Um, I think we can help each other out. I find that unlikely, but we're listening. We've all heard of Bello Bella. We all wish we hadn't. That thing's atrocious, a hundred times worse than the caramel crap everyone calls a macchiato. Thank you! Don't you wish you never had to see, smell, or hear about Bello Velvet ever again? Because I can make that happen if you tell me who the worst offender is. 
That one barista, Maisie Pine, is bonkers over it. She tries to give away free orders of it so it'll get more popular. Maisie Pine, huh? Thanks for your help. I'll make sure uh, to check it out. Just then, you glimpse Poppy flirting with one of the barristers, and her time and social confinement kill any game she might have once had. Or was she always this bad? So, Abel. Uh, it's Alex, actually. <laughs> That's so cute. Just like your face. Oh, God. I gotta put that poor guy out of his misery. As you make your way over, the barista notices you, and the look on his face instantly becomes one of, Please talk to me, I'll do anything! Hi, how can I help you? Uh, tell me. Uh, who Maisie Pine is? Maisie? Uh, she's the barista right over there. I'll give you a lifetime of free coffee if you can uh, get her to stop making those bellow velvets. He points, and you take a good look at Maisie Pine. The first thing you notice is she has a serious case of old face. Yep. Okay. Natalia! Natalia Romanoff! I've been calling your name for five minutes. Your iced bellow velvet is ready. Vibes that scream. I'm nasty and angry all the time. Check. Holding the drink from hell. Check. She might just be the one. Oh my god. Oh my god, relax. I was on the phone with my manager planning my next Tory Burch unboxing video. Just give me my coffee. You watch his most likely bellow velvet babe 21, who doesn't notice you at all. Thank you, bomb disguise. Has a total attitude shift as she hands over the coffee. Here you go. Enjoy. The Bella Velvet is my fave thing on the menu. Yeah, that's her. But before you can do anything, Nally takes a sip of her drink and then spits it right into probably Bella's face. Ugh, this is the worst thing I've ever tasted. I ordered a chai latte. The Bella Velvet is a work of art, but obviously someone with a palate of a child couldn't appreciate that. Having gathered all the evidence you need, you're moving for the kill, hoisting yourself up onto the counter and getting everyone's attention. My fellow thoroughbreds, haven't you all been wondering about Bellow Velvet Babe 21's real identity? Sure, I guess. Well, here she is. None other than the barista with the weird Bellow Velvet fetish, Maisie Pine. Panic flits across her face for a second, and then she runs! Straight into Zoe, who holds her in place, arms pinned behind her back. Let me go! No, old woman! <laughs> well, when you put it that nicely... She moves Maisie into a chair. Poppy marches up to Coffee Girl, grabs her face, and inspects it like she would a crime scene. Or a stain on a piece of mulberry silk. Mulberry what? Aren't you too old to be on campus? You've got the skin of a 43-year-old, Mindy. And that cheap foundation isn't helping. I can't believe it. Do you, do you Poppy Min Sinclair seriously not even know who I am? Should I? Beneath the dregs of bell bellow velvet, Maisie's face goes beet red, and she dives into her tarot. It was my first year here, and I was about to get the number of a super hot repair guy who was fixing our sink. So, I get off at five, and I heard there's a new movie playing. Uh, yeah, here, let me give you my num- And of course, that's right when Queen Poppy showed up. She just made it in a Zeta, and somehow was already present of the entire sorority. Excuse me, you old barista woman. What the hell, this army armiato spiced French vanilla tastes like ass. Manager! Can I get a manager? This person is trying to poison me! Oh, ho, 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 ho. haven't seen this guy in a while. What seems to be the problem, Miss Miss Mintzclair? I demand this elderly oak be fired immediately. Maisie, go home for the day. We'll discuss your continued employment tomorrow. Wait, wait, Poppy, please. This is all just a big misunderstanding. This misunderstanding here is why you're still talking to me. And then she threw her coffee in my face. <gasps> I was suffering second-degree burns. 
everyone was taking pics for the tea and laughing. Wait, wait, add the dog filter, perfect! And then I heard a beautiful, sexy voice. So, uh, you want to catch that new movie in town later? You'd still do that with... But it wasn't me he was talking to. Sure, pick me up at six, say the house, and wear the outfit I, uh, I'll have sent to your address. We'll take pictures for Picta. And if anyone asks your CFO, I can't be seen with someone who fixes toilets. Toodles! I swore I'd get my revenge on you, but before I could, Blair started taking over the school. She was supposed to be on my side. She was supposed to help me eliminate you and everyone else who ever looked down on me. I'm sorry, but I don't even know who the fuck you are or remember you. That's how obsolete you are. But instead, you just became another you. First of all, I don't know you. Like, how was I supposed to know you even existed? I was going to win you over with my creation! It's been months perfecting the Bellow Velvet, but by the time it was finished, it was too late. You'd become queen, and it just been more of a same ever since. The populace stayed popular and the rest of us get nothing. Kind of like the rich get richer. Oh, Elon Musk set to be the trillionaire. Oh, what a surprise. So basically, you were butthurt. I called you out for making a crappy drink. And somehow you spiraled into a whole revenge plot. If you and Blair hadn't teamed up, I wouldn't have, I would have got away with it. Well, these gullible idiots would be none the wiser. Wait, so the rumors about Blair selling Adderall aren't true? For the record, I knew they were fake. Blair would never stoop to anything so pedestrian. Hang on, when that rumor about me getting butt implants sophomore year dropped, the account Baby Bello was behind it. And it was Bello Yellow 19 who told the school I had chronic flatulence freshman year. Nobody got close to me for months. Oh, uh, hold on. I think the person who started the rumor about me marrying a Harry Styles cutout was called Velvet Delight. Jesus Christ. Where, where's Velvet Cake, at least? You and Zoe's eyes meet in a oh snap moment. And she leans in to whisper to you. I remember those rumors. They're some of the biggest that happened the whole time I've been at Velbor. Really? And if I can prove Macy's buying those so too. X will look like a total jerk for working with such a pathological liar. Diamond choice. Helper digger on grave. You spin on Macy, like your Ellie Woods, ready to cross-examine a lying perm having murder. If that Macy would look terrible with a perm and the only thing that gets murdered here is gonna be her social life. So is it true? Did you lie about poor Petra's butt implants? What about Nally's alleged flatulence problem? Or are you just stealing someone's brand because you don't know how to ruin someone's life on your own? I'm not saying copycat, it was all me. The implants, the farting, the fairy styles cut out. They were my brain children. And you know what? I'm proud. Every single one of my victims deserved. But like, what did I even do to you? You posted the dog filter pic of me covered in coffee on the tea. People called me the Macchiato Maltese for months. I still stand by uh, that being a total work of art. Okay, but why the hell would you target me? I hate your nasty coffee, but like, I never said so to your face. Um, hello, your hipster poser. I reblog your conceptual art poems on Stumblr all the time, and you never liked a single one of my posts. And that means you should say her butt implants are fake? What? You literally went after my ass? And me? The rumor absolutely tanked my dating game, man. Like, nobody wanted to, to compete with a Harry Styles cutout. Honestly, not too sure about you. I think you cut me in line in the dining hall freshman year. The point is, you all wronged me, and I won't apologize for getting my revenge. Wow, Macy. You poor thing. I didn't realize you had it so hard. The rejection, the abandonment, the line cutting. It must have really gotten me, uh... I should have been the leader to build you up, like you said. I'm, I'm like, legit sorry, like Jay-Z to Beyonce-level regret. Well, I don't forgive you, but I'm willing to give you a second chance. Wow, you're so benevolent. Laugh, skitter across the dining commons, and that's what clues Macy to the fact that sarcasm exists. 
and she's crap at picking up on him. Damn, Macy. It's like embarrassing to even look at you right now. Oh, I hate you all! Oh god, she's like literally pulling out her hair. Yawn. I've seen more realistic meltdown meltdowns in a soap opera. You fools don't even know who the half of what I've done! Oh, please continue. She jabs her finger at the Zeta sister. You! I made up a rumor that you picked your nose and wiped it on your designer clothes! Why? You hum while you walk! It's annoying! The only person here who's really annoying is you. She rounds on Celine, who just drifted over. It is a little Celine, the rumor that you're a tantric sex therapist to pay your tuition by doing... I don't even know what that means. Abigail! After you talked over me in psych class last week, I told the tea you're a devil worshipper. Uh, no. It's, uh, Hectate. My coven really got pissed off about that. And also, I've been voting for X all year, so why the hell is their lieutenant badmouthing their own supporter? Yeah, what the hell? Are you the one who told Professor or Phil Philosophy Professor I made a life-size paper mache replica of her? Wait, weren't these two people that supported X? Isn't this like the third time they've been X supporters? Is Pixelberry not reading their own shit and not able to come up with characters that are still X supporters, but like slowly turning? I'm confused. Um, I. And that's our show today, folks. Macy Pine is a snake and a liar. And that's no rumor. The moral of the story you can't trust X. Their minions are out of control. Exhibit A. You gesture towards Maisie, who takes a moment to go full exorcist. She lunges and tries to bite you, but Alex grabs her before she can connect. I rest my case. Now, if you've been personally victimized by Maisie Pine, please raise your hand. Literally every hand in the entire dining hall goes up, including a passing janitor. Holy shit. Well, I'm satisfied here. Poppy, would you like to do the honors? You hand off Bellow Velvet to Poppy, like you're handing her the keys to the city, and she gives you a Cheshire cat grin. Gladly. She tosses the Bellow Velvet in Macy's face right as you get your phone out to snap a pic, so you can always cherish the memory. <laughs> Goodbye, bitch. And this time, stay down. The crowd of students go wild following her cue and embracing their animal instincts, pelting Macy with food. Alex, when this is over, be a dear and bring Macy to the Dean for me. I believe her slander of all these fine folks is grounds for expulsion. Sure thing, Blair. Thanks for bringing the truth to light. Hey, we no longer have to deal with any more bellow velvet. As you strut away without looking back at the glorious chaos you wrought, Macy lets out one last desperate shriek. This isn't over. You might have taken me out, but you'll never stop the axe. Mm, right. I'll be sure to give the uh, Bellow Velvet uh, them a Bellow Velvet when I meet them. That that like that drink itself does not look good at all. Boats. A while later, the top fifteen are throwing a party for you at the clubhouse to celebrate your trouncing under their X minion. I was actually scared of X for a while, but Blair already handled four of her minions. And I didn't even know I was one of them. Like, you're like so smart, Blair. Oh, hi. Speaking of smart, let's keep the party on the DL. Midday Ragers are still banned, and I don't need to get on Seinhelm's bad side again. Your phone dings, and speak of the devil! No, there's no way she found out, is there? It has come to my attention that these rumors have been nothing but vicious libel. I hope you'll accept Belvoir's and my own sincere apologies. Your suspension has been lifted, effective immediately. Best Dean Margaret sign on. Alright, Blair's got a clean record. Let's turn this party up to a hundred. Yeah, but the midday ragers weren't unbanned, so only Blair. The clubhouse door slamming open steals everyone's attention and Ford bursts inside, leading Celine by the hand. Show of hands for who saw that coming. Yeah, me neither. Bros, bros, I got big news. I'd like to introduce you to my uh, girlfriend. She grew up on this uh, little beach town in Cali. 
Oh my god, that's so exotic. Tell us more! Oh, well, like Ford said, I grew up on the beach. I love surfing, shrimp tacos, Corona with lime. Uh, cliche, I know, but... You can surf and you're a chick that's hot. Oh, for the love of... Did you grow up in a sandcastle? You can barely believe your eyes as one by one the top 15 crowd around Celine, asking about her life and being and not horrible to her. Yeah, but you're also going to wonder if this is an ex. Big difference from last year, isn't it? Or maybe it's just like last year. Only now you're me and Celine's the new you. Mmm. You jump as Poppy, no longer skulking in a corner of the clubhouse, also wearing all black, murmurs in your ear like the ghost of Queen Bee's past. You better watch out, Farmsville. There's already a new small town nobody set to steal the limelight from the current queen. Don't be ridiculous, Poppy. Celine's just here for Ford, or with Ford. She doesn't want to steal anything from me. Yet. You sure about that? I don't remember you ever being fond of her as much as she is right now. It's like they've forgotten this is your party. We're having a Zeta bonding next week, and we're each allowed to invite a guest. You could should totally come. Yo, you have to let me do your nails. I took a nail art masterpiece or masterclass online, and I'm such a pro. Oh, um, thanks guys. I'd really love that. Oh, and before I forget, she cranes her head to see the past the throng of top 15ers around her and finally spots you standing practically alone. I wanted to congratulate you on proving your innocence and taking out that awful Maisie Pine Girl Blair. Gee, you're so sweet, Celine. Come here, I have so much to teach you. You're back at her over and the top 15 step aside to let her through. You want to teach me? That's such an honor. <sighs> I was trying to tell people that you weren't ex, but I'm really sussing it now. Of course I would. I see so much of me and you, and birds of a feather have to flock together. Belvoir's a rough place, after all. I'm still trying to figure out where I fit in, but Ford's great and your friends are so welcoming. Nothing like what X wants us to believe. You're so smart, Celine. I like that about you. I think that deserves something. I know. Why don't you give uh, the pool boy an order? There's a perk only a clubhouse member's got. Oh, really? Um, oh boy, could I have a Vesper Martini, please? I'm such a James Bond fan. Of course. He puts together a drink, shaking it well, before uh, pouring into a martini glass for Celine, who takes a sip. Wow, that's delicious. I've never actually tried one of those before. Um, consider this the start of your apprenticeship, Celine. You're so lucky to have me looking out for you. Right. We're looking out for her. Yeah, okay. Whenever you tell yourself to sleep at night. As the party rages on, you begin to uh, tire from once again being the center of attention. You decide it's time to subtly remove yourself from the limelight. You spot Poppy and Zoe on their own on opposite end ends of the clubhouse and contemplate who to approach. I'll talk to Poppy or Zoe. I'll go with Zoe. You join Zoe at the edge of the pool, kick off your shoes, and dip your feet into the cool water. And there she is, our Benelva Queen. It was a nice what you did for Celine. I saw Poppy trying to get you to go off on her. Mm, I'll admit, sometimes it's hard to resist the temptation of power, but she kind of reminds me of me, you know? I'm glad you're not stupid at Poppy's level and harassing the innocents. And honestly, I'm glad we got rid of Macy Pine and saved Ohio from being uh, the biggest catfish of the century. But how much longer do we have to work with Poppy? Because I swear, I'm two seconds away from breaking out knives. Yeah, it majorly sucks that she has so much useful intel. While being absolutely useless at actually using it. Like you've done all the work. Nah, don't count yourself out. Everyone knows we're the real dream team. Oh, boo. So you really do still like me better than her. Uh... That's kind of a given. Oh god, don't even joke about that. Working with Poppy is an unpleasant necessity. Like cough medicine when you're sick. Oh, this is true. This is true. But seriously, can you please stop talking about the cranky witch now? I'd rather talk about um, any more sick tracks you've been working on. 
Oh, I got a few. Hmm. What? That's all I get? I don't want to jinx things, but there's the potential for something big coming up. Not to mention she, who uh, we hate to name again, but uh, I still got beef with her over last year's uh, Bacchanalia. Oh, uh, yeah. I can go buy a vat of tomatoes and pummel her, and then uh, myself with them if you want. That's way to you, but no need. I've been working on the perfect payback. A little more fine-tuning, and I'll be ready to unleash. Oh, tell me more. No can do. Wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, but I can guarantee you love it. And Poppy will be livid. Well, yes. Ugh. You're always inspiring me to be better and badder. Likewise, babe. It's why we're the best team. She stretches her arms out of her head. Now, I'm gonna go uh, check out the private hot tub I've heard about. Join me if you want. This is your chance to sneak away and have a steamy hot tub hookup with Zoe. Or Poppy. Eh. I'm gonna be real. Why would you hook up with Poppy? Actually, I should keep an eye out on everyone out here. Don't want them doing something stupid and alerting the dean of our legal party. Good thing. Last I saw, Ford was trying to fill the pool with beer. Sounds like something that uh, could go disastrously wrong. Why would you want to fill a pool up with beer? Ugh. Wine? Sure. Jello? Sure. Chocolate? Okay. Beer? No. Urgent delivery for Blair Hughes. The pool boy rushes up to you, holding out a very familiar envelope. Apodi is back to play. You take it in your perfectly manicured fingers with a smile. Oh, how far you've come since the little black envelope appeared on your doorstep. Looks like the next challenge is on. Oh, that's it? That's over? Well, that was short and sweet, I guess. Well, without further ado, thanks for watching. You know what to do, it's here on the screen. Please make sure to like the video, share it, share this channel, and make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, you become a part of this community, and not just that, but you'll also receive notifications of when content is available, especially if you hit that bell icon. Also, you can become a sponsor of this channel. What does that mean? It means your name will have a recognizable symbol next to it. You will be a standout member of this community, and it means you like this community so much that you're able to say, you know what? I love this community, and um, I want to do a little bit more. Like, Vernon Bell has been a fantastic member of this community. She is at the level of Captain of Awesome for 28 months, and she has continued to support this channel on YouTube. Uh, many of you can also do that as well. Again, you can feel free to hit that Join button, and it's just taking the next step. And uh, just keep in mind that it also helps to keep the lights on, it helps for my medical, it helps for a lot of things, and it also helps to put back in the channel. Um, it helps to do diamond choices, it helps to, you know, maybe even go for VIP if we were ever financially able to generate that much from YouTube a month, and so much more things like that. So do keep that in mind. Once again, thank you all for watching, much love and appreciation, and I will catch you all later. Peace out.